much. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to present our results at this uh, press conference. Um, so I have no direct financial relationships to disclose. My hospital receives institutional funding both for non-profit and profit clinical trials. <clears throat> so with the introduction of mammographic screening, uh, intraepithelial neoplasia represents at least 20% of all breast neoplasms. This entity includes atypical ductal hyperplasia, ductal and lobular carcinoma in situ. These disorders have a slight different heterogeneous behavior. Why ADH and LCAS may be offered tamoxifen based on the results of the NACBP prevention trial with a low uptake, however, um, there is a tendency in the last few years to de-escalate the treatment of DCIS, which includes radiotherapy plus five years of tamoxifen because of the lack of evidence on overall mortality. <clears throat> we know very well that tamoxifen is very effective in prevention, but its toxicity, namely uh, rare cases of endometrial cancer, deep vein thrombosis, and menopausal symptoms represent an important barrier for its broad use in that population at increased risk for breast cancer. This drug is quite old, it was developed in the 60s, and at that time, the minimal effective dose was not assessed, and this drug binds to the estrogen receptor with the saturation kinetics, but it's not clear what is the minimal active dose to elicit its biological and clinical effects. So our hypothesis was that a lower dose, namely five milligrams per day, and a shorter duration of treatment, namely three years, was as effective and less toxic than 20 milligrams a day. So some 15 years ago, we conducted a randomized window opportunity pre-surgical trial in women waiting for, for surgery where we randomize <coughs> women to 20 or five or one milligram per day. And you can see here very clearly that the lower doses, even one milligram per day was not inferior to 20 milligram in decreasing breast cancer proliferation as measured by KI-67, whereas in the control arms there was an increase of four weeks apart. So the study design of this trial is the following. Women aged 75 years or younger with either ADH or LCIS or ER positive or unknown DCIS were randomized to five milligram of tamoxifen per day or placebo for three years plus at least two years of follow-up. The primary point of the trial is the incidence of invasive breast cancer or DCIS. 500 participants were enrolled from 14 centers in Italy. Um, the women were assessed every six months with clinical visit and quality of life questionnaires, and mammography was repeated every 12 months. The median follow-up of the current analysis is 5.1 years, and is based on a total of 42 primary breast cancer events. Uh, these are the main subject and tumor characteristics at the baseline. You see there is no imbalance between the two arms. Mean age was 54. 45% were premenopausal. As you see, the Mediterranean diet, diet works because the mean BMI was 25. 20% had ADH. 10% had LCIS. And 70% had DCIS. Two thirds were ER positive, one third was unknown. There was less than 10% over two new overexpressors. Quadrantectomy was performed in more than 80% of the women, and radiotherapy was delivered to the women with high risk DCIS, namely G3, comedo, positive margins, or younger age. These are the main findings of the trial. There was a 52% reduction in the cumulative risk of developing a recurrence in the low-dose tamoxifen arms, 28 versus 14 events compared with placebo. This difference is statistically significant. The, the annual risk of events declines from 24 per thousand per year to 12 per thousand per year. 
Likewise, and perhaps more <laughs> impressively, there was a 75% reduction in the risk of contralateral breast cancer with low-dose tamoxifen. But of course, this analysis is based only on 15 events, so we have to be cautious. Serious adverse events, of course, in this de-escalation trial, toxicity is as important as efficacy. We saw one case of stage one endometrial cancer with tamoxifen, one case each of deep vein thrombosis, and one case of deep uh, pulmonary emboli in the placebo arm, no difference on other neoplasts, coronary disease, one death on tamoxifen, two deaths on placebo. If we compare these findings with the NACDP P1 prevention trial with a dose of 20 milligram per day, we would expect 2.7 endometrial cancers on tamoxifen and 2.4 DDT or pulmonary emboli. So patient reported outcomes as, are as important efficacy here. We carefully assessed the frequency and intensity of hot flashes, which is the most frequent side effect of tamoxifen using a semi-annual questionnaire self-reported by the women using the method developed by Loprinzi and co-workers. There is a slight borderline significant increase in the number of hot flashes per day, less than one <laughs> hot flash extra on tamoxifen. Uh, whereas if we multiply the frequency by the intensity, there was no significant difference between the two arms. Perhaps more importantly, vaginal dryness or pain during intercourse was not affected by the use of tamoxifen. And likewise, musculoskeletal pain or arthralgia, which are the most important side effect of aromatase inhibitors, were not increased by the tamoxifen. <clears throat> so I want to conclude by saying that we have shown that five milligram per day for three years can have the recurrence of breast intraepithelial neoplasia in line with the effect noted with 20 milligram per day or even slightly better uh, in the NSCBP B24 trial. Low dose tamoxifen decreased contralateral breast cancer by 75%, suggesting a strong preventive potential. The rate of endometrial cancer and DUT on five milligram was not different from placebo and two times lower than 20 milligram. Um, the menopausal symptoms were not worsened except for a borderline effect on hot flashes. We think our results have external validity given the pragmatic nature of the trial and the easy accessibility of the drug and are therefore generalizable. Because the five milligram tablets are not available in the market, you can either cut the 10 milligram tablet or use the 10 milligram every other day, which I think is applicable in clinical practice from tomorrow. The study was supported by the government, the Italian Ministry of Health, and two charities, the, the Italian Association for Cancer Research and the Italian League Against Cancer. We are indebted to this supporters for the continuous uh, support to, to non-profit trials for a fair, equitable, and affordable medicine. Thank you for your attention.